right, let us once again perform the whole enchilada. That is, let's diagonalize a matrix, not knowing any of the information from the beginning about any of its eigen theory, any of the spectral results about this matrix. Let's do the whole enchilada. But this time we're going to do it with a complex matrix, but this complex matrix will be Hermitian. If we take the conjugate transpose of A, we do get back A here. And so when we diagonalize this, we can actually do a unitary diagonalization. And so that's what we're going to try to do here. And so this will take a little bit of effort because there's a lot of things going on here. But so let's begin by looking for the eigenvalues of this Hermitian matrix. By the spect spectral theorem of Hermitian matrices, we can anticipate that these vectors, or the, the, the eigenvalues are gonna be real. So how do we do that? Um, the characteristic polynomial of this matrix, remember, is the determinant of A, A minus lambda I. We don't know what, I, what the lambdas are yet. We'll treat it as a variable. And so we're taking the determinant here, two minus lambda, uh, one plus i, and then one minus i, and then we get three minus lambda. As this is just a two by two matrix, uh, we can take the product of the diagonals and subtract them. So we get two minus lambda times three minus lambda. And then we're gonna subtract from this one plus i and one minus i right there. So foil out the two minus lambda with the three minus lambda. We end up with six. Uh, we're going to get minus two lambda minus three lambda plus lambda squared. Uh, do be careful on the complex arithmetic if you haven't had as much practice with that. You can foil that thing out, uh, in which case you would get something like one minus i plus i, and then you're going to get negative i squared, which is actually plus one since i squared is negative one. Uh, you'll see some combination of things like the negative i plus i, they cancel. The negative 2 lambda will combine with the negative 3 lambda. And so we end up with 6 minus 5 lambda plus lambda squared. And then we get a minus 2 right there. Putting this all together, our characteristic polynomial is lambda squared minus 5 lambda plus 4. And our goal, of course, is to factor this thing. We want factors of 4 that add up to be negative 5. We can take lambda minus four and lambda minus one. And so then our eigenvalues are gonna be four and one, which as I predicted, I mean, cause there's, there's no soothsaying that happened right here. I didn't have to look at the bones of a dead shrew or anything. Uh, we have a Hermitian matrix, it's eigenvalues necessarily have to be real. So we get these numbers four and one. So now we have the eigenvalues. So what we wanna do now is proceed to compute uh, the eigen, the eigen spaces. Let's find a basis for each eigen space. So we're going to consider. Uh, we want to look for the null space of a minus four i. We'll do that over here, and then on the other side, we'll look at the null space of a minus i one i there. And so consider what's going on there. So we have to first take the matrix a minus four i, like so. And so as a matrix, this will look like. Uh, 2 minus 4, which gives us a negative 2, 1 plus i, 1 minus i, and then we're going to get 3 minus 4, uh, which gives us a negative 1 right here. Uh, did I do that one correctly? I think so, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, that's fine. And so notice here that you have a 2 by 2 matrix, and we know that this thing is singular, right? Because after all, since four is an eigenvalue, this matrix is going to be singular. So we can actually do ourselves a little bit of a, of a, of a benefit for us that we know that the second row um, is going to basically just vanish away because it has to be a multiple of the first row. Otherwise, this thing would be a non-singular matrix. Since it's singular, we know this thing can row reduce uh, to be, I'm going to times the first row by negative one as well. So this will row reduce to be two, one, minus one, minus i, over zero, zero. Uh, and the reason I do that is then uh, we can, I mean, you can divide by two if you want to, uh, but we have this relationship. If we think of the associated homogeneous system of equations here, we have that two X one is equal to one plus I X two. And so if you pick something like um, X two equals one, uh, you end up with well, actually, I think I'm going to go the other way around. I actually want to solve for x1 right here. And so you're going to get 1 plus i over 2 times x2. So if you set x2 equal to be 1, right, then you're going to get this vector 
V1, uh, which is given as X2 is set to be one and X, uh, then the X, and then the first one will be a one plus I over two, like so. And like always, if you don't care for, if you don't care for the fractions, you could always factor that thing out. The one half that is. And so you end up with one plus I and two, which is kind of what I was hinting towards earlier. And you can just ignore this scalar because again, we're looking for a basis. We don't need a specific vector. So we can take this vector uh, V1 to be one plus I and two. This is perfectly good right here. As we are trying to look for a unitary uh, diagonalization, we do have to normalize this thing. If we take the length of V1 here, uh, you'll end up with one plus one plus four, all inside the square root. You just square the co the real imaginary parts of these things individually and add them together. And so we end up with the square root of six, which then tells us our vector u, the eigenvector we want. This is a normal vector here. It's have you have a length of one. We're going to get the vector one over the square root of six times one plus i n two. So this is our vector uh, u one that we're gonna use in our forthcoming um, unitary matrix. Uh, let's go back and repeat this process for uh, the eigenvalue one. So same basic idea, we have to look at the matrix A minus I, uh, which that ends up giving us negative one. We get negative one, I'm sorry, I, I think I did that one backwards there. Uh, peeking at what we did before, right? Because I mean, after all, if you ever if you're not sure what to do at this stage, just look at the look at the determinant you did before and just plug in uh, plug in lambda equals one there. Uh, of course, don't actually take the determinant. So we get two minus one, which is one, one plus i, one minus i, and then three minus one, which is a two. So this is the matrix we want to row reduce. And kind of like I said before, uh, we could use the fact that. Because we have a two by two matrix and we know it's singular, the second row we don't need it because it has to be a multiple of the others. This kind of helps us avoid some of the arithmetic with the complex numbers. We end up with one, one plus i, and then zero, zero, like that. And so then in terms of our free variables and dependent variables, we get x1 is equal to negative one plus i x2. And so we can take as a vector V1, we'll just take X2 to be one again. And so we get negative one minus I right there. That gives us a pretty good eigenvector. No fractions to have to worry about. We can't really avoid the imaginary numbers whatsoever. Uh, but be aware as we normalize this thing, when you take the length of this vector, this is not V1, this is V2 now. When you take the length of V2, uh, you're going to get 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1. So the length of this vector is the square root of 3. Again, you just square the real imaginary part individually and add those all up. And so then u2 is going to be the vector 1 over the square root of 3 times negative 1 minus i all over 1. And you can switch that with a negative if that if you wanted to. I think we'll be content uh, with the vector that's in front of us. So now that we have u1 and u2, uh, our matrix, our matrix A, the original matrix A can be then factored as P, D, P star. We're looking for a unitary factorization here. Now the matrix P will take as its columns u1 and u2. Uh, the diagonal matrix will take the two eigenvalues we had as its diagonals. And then as we're taking the conjugate transpose for P, uh, our matrix is going to look like u1 star, u2 star. So those are those are going to be row vectors right there. And so if we plug in the information that we have now found, uh, we get the following. Give yourself some space here. So u1, we saw before, we're going to get uh, 1 plus i over the square root of 6. We're also going to get 2 over the square root of 6. Don't feel any desire to rationalize those denominators. It's not going to help us out any bit right here. Um, and then for u2, we're going to get negative 1 minus i over the square root of 3. And then we're going to also get 1 over the square root of 3. So this is our matrix P. Our matrix D will be the eigenvalues we had before, which is 4, 
and 1. Make sure you go in the same order that you put the eigenvectors. And then for P star here, we take the conjugate transpose of the first matrix. So rows become columns and make sure you take conjugates. So you get 1 minus I over the square root of 6. So we took the conjugate of that. You're going to get 2 over the square root of 6. That was a real number, so therefore the, the conjugation did nothing. Next, you're going to get negative 1 plus I over the square root of 3. Notice how I took the conjugate right there. And then you get 1 over the square root of 3 right here. And so you now see in front of you, the uh, we see the orthogonal diagonalization of this matrix, right? And you can multiply this thing out and verify that this is in fact a correct factorization of the original matrix right there. And so this is again the whole enchilada, but with the extra benefits that we did some complex numbers this time, and we in fact got an orthogonal, I, I take that back, we had a unitary diagonalization, which is the complex counterpart of an orthogonal diagonalization.